Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing Narve 20, or as it's known internally by uh, employees at AMD, the NVIDIA killer. So this is an exclusive, and it is also an article, so if you prefer the written word, then you can find it, of course, linked in the video description. So let's get some context behind all of this before we start delving into the information that I was told by a source last night. And this source, by the way, has proven reliable in the past, but we'll get into that in a moment. So currently, NVIDIA are facing uh, the RX 5700 and 5700 XT from AMD. The Radeon 7 is basically end of line now, so that was not that much faster, to be honest, than the 5700 XT, and given the massive price premium, it didn't really make sense for AMD to continue to sell the Radeon 7. The RX 5700 XT contains 2560 shaders and once again is based on the Narve 10 core. We also have 12 and 14, with 12 thought to be the higher end GPU. Uh, we think it has 4096 shaders because of a couple of leaks that have emerged on Twitter and other places. And the Narve 14 is thought to be a card which, or for a card, which is basically going to square off against the GTX 16 series from NVIDIA. Uh, it looks like it has 24 compute units, so quite the cut from the 40 that is in the RX 5700 XT. And yeah, now we kind of get an idea of what the market is right now. So what have I learned? Well, uh, last night I was actually called by a source. I don't want to give too much information about who he is for obvious reasons, but uh, he has proven to be rather reliable in the past and has proven to be like a secondary source for a couple of other stories that I've broken. If you're unfamiliar with the channel, we were the first... Uh, source of the July 7th uh, release date for both the uh, Ryzen 3000 series along with the um, RX 5700 series. So we actually started that. I'll, I've linked all of this in the uh, article that is linked in the video description. So if you need proof that we were the ones who did that, you can find it there. We were also the first uh, people to let you know that Radeon, uh, sorry, that Radeon 7 was coming for gamers, although back then it was just known as Vega 7 NM. And we were also then the ones who subsequently leaked much of the information for Radeon 7. And there has been also numerous other leaks. So generally speaking, our exclusives have been pretty good. With that said though, this source is a secondary source and while he has proven to be reliable in the past, obviously plans can change. So if this doesn't turn out to be 100%, yeah, well, I'm just saying. So enough rambling, what can I tell you about the GPUs? Well, from what I'm hearing, Lisa Su has been very frustrated with the domination that NVIDIA have in the GPU market, and so she wishes to counter that. And so Narve 20 is designed around that goal, basically to beat whatever NVIDIA are releasing. That sounds awfully like the design goals around Zen 2 to me, just for your FYI. Now, furthermore, the GPUs are said to be releasing next year, most likely the uh, second quarter is what I'm being told, although obviously this could be a little bit earlier or a little bit later, depending upon numerous issues. Now, you may say to yourself, well, that's kind of early, right? I mean, let's say that the big Narve does release in the fourth quarter, which is what the rumors are now, once again, 4096 shaders. That could potentially only be two and a half, three months later, we see Narve 20. So what the heck? Well, you have to remember the context of this. There's a couple of things. The first, I actually did ask my source about this. Uh, the first thing you have to remember is that the original uh, release date for the uh, Narve 10 GPUs was pushed back. Originally, it was supposed to be earlier this year than what uh, we saw it. It was supposed to be like January or February. But, uh, well, guess what? It just didn't happen. And there are numerous uh, reasons behind that. But basically, there were just issues with the design. Supposedly, I was also told that this is possibly why uh, AMD went with a mid-sized GPU in the RX 5700 and 5700 XT. Basically, they were shifting not only to a different architecture with RDNA, but furthermore, they were also 
uh, shifting down to a 7nm process. So with all of those like things they're trying to uh, juggle and balance, what they didn't want is to basically have like a 1% yield. Yes, I'm being a bit silly with 1%, but you kind of get my point. Basically, they wanted to at least have something going in their favor. So they figured a mid-sized design is the best way to get an idea of uh, how RDNA is uh, scaling, what type of issues are going to be shifting down to the 7nm process and so on. Remember, the GPUs do not have the benefit of the chiplet design of Zen 2. With Zen 2, they are using, well, chiplets, but with Nave, it's a monolithic die. And AMD are talking about uh, chiplet design for GPUs in the future, but that's not now, so that doesn't help any, right? So my source told me that there are two GPUs that he knows about. The first is Nave 21, and the second is Nave 23. The 23 is the one that really piqued my interest, and you'll know why as soon as I say it, NVIDIA Killer. That's right. That is the the pet name that AMD are allegedly giving this GPU uh, inside the company. Now, to be clear, this is not a code name. It is a pet name. It's like, you know, an affectionate name they're giving the project internally. You know, so your girlfriend or, you know, your significant other might be called Jill or Tom, but, you know, you might be calling them Schnookums. That's basically what they're doing internally. This is an internal code. This is just an internal pet name. So they're calling it the NVIDIA killer. And the reason that that language is so interesting to my source and actually to me as well is it's very confident. And you may say to yourself, well, why does that matter? Because it's actually the first time, uh, to my source's memory, that he's ever heard AMD use that language before when referring to GPUs. Even back in the ATI days, they weren't that confident. Uh, back in, for example, Vega, Polaris, and so on and so on, they never used the term NVIDIA killer. The term NVIDIA killer, though, is pretty ambiguous, and it's possible that this phrase is not being used necessarily in relation purely to performance. It's possible that AMD are instead going to be targeting performance slash price ratio, i.e. they're going to be undercutting NVIDIA, but offering a similar or at least competitive level of performance to the next generation GeForce. I'd like to temper your excitement though here because we don't know i mean maybe amd do you know they probably have a better idea of what nvidia are working on than what i do and probably what you do but from what i understand we don't really know yet what nvidia are working on we know it's going to be the geforce 30 series i know i've shocked you there it's okay i'll give you a moment to recover so it's the GeForce 30 series, and we are pretty certain it's going to be 7nm, which is being manufactured by Samsung, although there is also some rumors it's going to be 7nm from TSMC. However, NVIDIA multiple times have said that they don't just like the off-the-shelf 7nm or 12nm or whatever, and they want to customize it, whatever that means. So what we don't know is what the architecture is like. NVIDIA are really good at optimizing architecture. Turing is on the 12nm process, and I don't want to turn this into an RDNA versus Turing because that's well outside the scope of this video, but it's hard to argue the power efficiency of Turing considering it's on a 12NM process, right? It's, it's just really impressive. And yeah, so we don't know what NVIDIA are doing with uh, RTX 30, whether it's going to be a Turing refresh. Some people are saying that we're not going to get Ampere for GeForce 30. I don't know that information. All I know is that it's most likely going to be 7nm and launch next year. So we don't know what level of performance AMD are going to be facing off against with uh, the RTX 30 series. I mean, for all we know, NVIDIA could launch a GPU which is powered by, like, you know, uh, a star inside the GPU core, and they've managed to miniaturize it. Let's just say, like, a little miniature black hole inside the GPU core, and it's powering it. We, you know, it, we, we don't really know. But what we do know is that AMD are being very confident, and next year it's going to be super interesting, also because XC is going to launch. And XC... Um, is said to be up to 512 execution units. I'm doing an analysis of XE. And I actually had to rewrite some of it because of a couple of leaks recently. So that's not frustrating or anything. But uh, XE is 512 execution units. And we know that the Ice Lake GPU, which is generation 11, is uh, up to 1.1-ish 1 1 teaflops. 
and uh, sorry, up to around one teraflop of performance, and that's with a 1.1 gigahertz clock frequency, and that's with 64 execution units. So I don't think that a discrete GPU is only going to be running at that clock frequency, 1.1 gigahertz. I suspect it's going to be much higher frequency, like 1.5, 1.6, 1.8, whatever, which means that in theory anyway, uh, in terms of FP32 performance, uh, Generation 12, which is XC, could be rather impressive, and that's going to launch next year. So, yeah, basically, there's going to be a lot to fight for uh, in the next 12 months. Uh, I was also told that most likely we're going to see ray tracing, but that's not surprising. That's basically confirmed with next, next generation RDNA. That's assuming this is next generation RDNA. We know the code name is uh, Narve 20, but it's not been officially confirmed by AMD that Narve 20 is next generation RDNA. I'm going to guess it is, but it's not 100% confirmed. So it's possible that it's just like a tweaked architecture, but it's also more, more probable that it is next generation RDNA. Next generation RDNA also makes sense given what was said at the E3 conference, but at micro, uh, sorry, at the Microsoft E3 conference. Um, essentially, it was confirmed it's going to have ray tracing, and then in subsequent discussions from Lisa Su, the wording she used was super interesting, particularly with xbox she said something like um next generation rdna architecture is found inside the xbox uh scarlet I, that's not a verbatim quote but she definitely said next generation rdna uh, you can actually find uh, a deep analysis of that in a video called all you need to know about xbox scarlet it's on the channel so most likely anyway uh, these GPUs will feature some type of hybrid ray tracing. We've also seen the pattern, as long along with the uh, ray tracing vision uh, roadmap. And don't forget, we were one of the first to actually leak the fact that uh, next generation Narve, that's what we called it back then, obviously we didn't know it was going to be RDNA, actually had ray tracing. So a lot of the stuff does tie together. So what are my closing thoughts on all of this? Well, honestly, it's still very early to know what's going to happen with graphics over the next year. I can tell you, though, that I think over the next year, it's going to be super interesting in not just the PC space, but also the console space. I'm really curious to know what's happening with the next generation uh, consoles and the GPU that's found inside of them. But I'm also going to be very curious to see what happens with each of the major GPU manufacturers and exactly what support we see. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's happening with NVIDIA right now, like opening up the drivers and providing a lot of documentation for Linux, which is kind of cool. We've got AMD, of course, that are really embracing the uh, open nature with GPU open. Intel are just doing anything and everything they can to say, hey, remember, we're, we're you know doing discrete graphics right now. There's even like a post that's asking, shall we include LOD sliders for uh, graphics for like... Um, for performance reasons as well as uh for um uh, legacy games there you go that's the word i was looking for brain was ticking there uh so for like legacy game support and also just you know for the sheer hell of it so all of these companies are really going to be vying for your dollars so i'm hoping and this is my hope this is not obviously based upon information because we don't have benchmarks for these things yet what i'm hoping is that each each uh, manufacturer has a really compelling reason to buy their card and that the prices are competitive because that's just awesome for us. At worst comes to the worst, let's say one of the manufacturers provides us a product that doesn't quite uh, hit the mark, whomever that is. I'm going to pick on NVIDIA, so let's say that NVIDIA don't quite hit the targets that we're hoping for because maybe they were a little bit complacent because, you know, they're just refreshing Turing or whatever. That's not, once again, a rumor. I'm just giving an example. Then Intel and AMD hopefully could pick up that slack, and we're not just going to be like, oh, well, all we can do is buy AMD. Similarly, if AMD dropped the ball or Intel dropped the ball, hopefully the other two will pick up the slack. So there's always at least two competitors, which will be really awesome. And that's much the same as, of course, with the CPU arena. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then definitely consider subscribing to the channel for much more content. You can once again find this linked in the description if you want the article form. 
Uh, that was really terribly said, but whatever. And I'd also like to apologize for the quite uh, hasty nature of putting this video together. I am going to be going out later, and I'm not going to be back until really late. So I kind of have to be faster than normal with the editing process and kind of getting everything up. So I apologize for that, but it just kind of is what it is. So it's either I don't, <laughs> it's either uh, I kind of make things a little bit hastier than normal or... Uh, this is just not going to be up today, and uh, yeah, it's just not going to be good. So, with all of that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now, and have an amazing day.